Now, as promised, here's your instruction on visual pasta from Zip Tie. Thanks, Brady. My name is Noah Ilyinsky. Um, I'm going to talk about how to draw good diagrams. This is work that came out of my master's thesis uh, in the Department of Technical Communication at the University of Washington. So um, how to make lasagna instead of spaghetti. I, I love this metaphor. This came out of a conversation with my advisor. And, and what this is about is that you see a lot of really bad visual things out there in the world. It's kind of, kind of these homogenous lumps that are not really well organized. And it's kind of like someone put a big scoop of pasta on your plate and you can't tell what the hell is going on. And I realized the diagrams that I was constructing were layered and had a lot of really discreet ingredients going on and they were nicely ordered. And that's lasagna. And I like that a lot better. So um, in terms of complexity, this is a very simple diagram. There's one flavor of entity going on here, it's the person, and there's one relationship going on here, it's the hierarchy, and this could be a thousand people, and it's still not very complex, there's only a very little bit of things going on there. I'm talking about how to construct things that have got more different layers going on. And the way to do that is you have to make good choices um, as you're designing things. So five key points, what are your goals, what are the needs of your audience, what to include in the diagram, where to put it and how to encode it. And these flow into a nice little process, which I'm not going to go into, but basically um, all of these things will inform you step by step as you're, as you're creating this masterpiece that you're going to create. So the first thing, what is your goal? Why are you engaged in this exercise? If you don't know what you're trying to do, if you can't sum it up very concisely, something that you're trying to inform or educate or someone that you're trying to persuade, um, you haven't got a product. The famous Menard map was an anti-war map showing how many soldiers died. And uh, the goal of this whole thing was just to say, hey, look, war's a bad thing. So um, understand your users. All of you engineers, raise your hand if you think you understand your users. You're wrong. That's how it goes. That's why engineers don't make good product designers. You don't know what's in your users' heads and you need to do research to find that out. Um, you want to know about their patience level and their language and all these things that aren't, aren't going to come to you. That's critical throughout. Um, what to include? Really only the necessary information, which I've not done on this slide. I've got too much on the slide. Um, some redundancy and encoding is useful. Lots of decoration is garbage. That was a bad diagram. This is a diagram that does a very good job with the redundancy. So these little orange houses are a different shape and a different color, and they're differentiated by text and placement and size from the green little community nodes. If you take out the redundant encoding, um, you get a very, a very Spartan diagram. This is exactly the same information, but those redundancies of shape and color are missing, and so it takes more effort to find what you need. Um, so none of that was decorative. That was actually informative use that was going on there. So that's what to include. Um, where to put it? Placement on the page is really important. Even if you don't think you meant something by it, your readers or your customers who want to pay you money will think you meant something by it. Um, Relative placement matters. Things that are grouped close together, people will think are related. Things that are far apart, people think are not related. Absolute placement matters. Don't put your submarines over your airplanes. It doesn't work. Use your axes. Where it's on the page matters. If you can imagine trying to relate in a table or prose the relationships of the placement of all these states, it'd be miserable. But you say, no. North, south, east, west matters. And this is how they fit together. There's a ton of information that I haven't had to write to show you that map. This is a diagram where placement is not relevant. And so all these lines that connect all these boxes um, as your spaghetti, right? These lines could be half as long if you had some even vaguely arbitrary sense of the matter, making the placement matter, but there's nothing there. The last one, how does it look? Um, people's brains are pattern matching machines. People will find patterns, even if you didn't mean for there to be patterns, and they will assume that if the pattern is consistent or if it's violated, that's meaningful. We use this to predict the future. It's called learning. This is what people's brains do. <laughs> People will learn if you give them a consistent pattern to work with. If you violate that pattern, you inhibit learning. This is not a good strategy. So here's some patterns that most of us hopefully recognize and can successfully predict some behaviors based upon. Um, so, and now we're going to look at a couple of examples. There's some arbitrary choices in this diagram. I'm not sure why they chose pink and blue. There's no real gender here in this coursework, but that's what I think of when I see baby, you know, shades of pink and blue. There's some other things that are represented both by color and by typography, but differently. That was a poor choice, I think. Um, this is one of my own diagrams. There's some intention here. So I have some redundant encoding where these rows are differentiated from each other, both by placement and by color. So it makes it very clear to the user what's going on, that those rows are different, and there's also some meaning in those colors. And then to wrap 
wrap it all up, we have the worst diagram I've seen in a long time. So this violates pretty much everything. Um, there's no real clear goal other than to show what a mess this whole situation was. Uh, clearly, they didn't take my needs into account when they designed this or any conventions that I'm familiar with. Um, it absolutely violates the principle of there's too much on the page, except maybe that's the goal of it. Uh, the placement is completely arbitrary, so you can learn nothing by the placement. And there's just enough consistency in the encoding little pockets of it here and there that you think you've learned something, and then you look somewhere else in the diagram, and the consistency is broken. So um, that's how it ought to not be. If you're really interested in that, you can read 90 pages and lots of pictures about this on my website, complexdiagrams.com. Read the whole thesis. It's lots of fun, I promise. And if you have really interesting data that you'd like to see treated uh, visually, uh, be in touch, because I'd love to play with interesting data sets that you have. Thank you very much. Yeah.